UK Prime Minister Liz Truss has delivered her crucial speech at the Conservative Party conference in Birmingham. It came amid turmoil within her party and days after a major U-turn on the top rate of tax for the highest earners, which her government was set to abolish. Liz Truss's speech came with the warning. She says that change brings disruption. Just minutes into her speech, it was disrupted by Greenpeace protesters. They waved a banner at the leader saying who voted for this before they were thrown out. In these tough times, we need to step up. I'm determined to get Britain moving, to get us through the tempest and to put us on a stronger footing as a nation. I'm driven in this mission by my firm belief in the British people. Well, referring directly to that U-turn on abolishing the top rate of tax, the Prime Minister said, again, she gets it and has listened. But she insisted she'd be sticking with the rest of her plan to boost economic growth. And she also said that those urging Ukraine to give up land for a peace deal with Russia should not be listened to. She insisted that Kiev can and will win the war in Ukraine. Well, for more, let's go to our correspondent, Alex Isett, with this report. For many people listening to Liz Truss, it'll probably be the first time that they've heard our Prime Minister speak on all of her policies. And she got a really warm reception when she walked up to the audience, a round of applause, and a lot of people were ready to listen to what she had to say. Although she seemed quite relaxed and not really taken aback by the audience members. And even when there was a bit of a kerfuffle at the back, as Greenpeace held up that banner and asked who voted for this, she just laughed it off and said she'd talk about the protesters later. We're seeing a very different trust here than one we had seen at the beginning of the Hustons. She does seem to be a bit more confident in herself. And in fact, some of her statements today did seem that she was really driving home that she is a strong-minded woman. And actually, for a few of her policies that she wanted to reiterate upon did make it sound like she was offering a crazy amount of promises. She's talking about changing the whole way the NHS works. She's talking about nuclear policy. She's talking about environmental changes. She's talking about economics. All of these things seem to suggest that in the long term, Britain will be a strong nation, one that it was many years ago, but didn't really give much of the detail about how we're going to go forward. She talks about militant unions, stopping protesters like the ones that attended today. But again, how exactly these will all be done. Dr Nigel Fletcher, political historian at King's College, joins me now live from London. Dr Fletcher, what did you make of that speech? What was Liz Truss trying to achieve today? Well, I think what she was trying to achieve was to effectively introduce herself um, to the electorate, really. I think she's she's had, because of circumstances, a very difficult time. Um, some of it's self-inflicted, it has to be said, in terms of the, um, the mini-budget um, only 10 days or so ago. Um, but also, um, I think she was very uh, disadvantaged by the fact that one of the major things that uh, she did on coming to office... Um, the energy package, the huge amount of government spending that's that involved, um, was hugely overshadowed um, when uh, Her Majesty the Queen died um, the, the very day that was being um, outlined in Parliament. So I think what uh, she, she's she been trying to do in, in this speech and what the conference really should have been about uh, was about her having another opportunity to really introduce herself to the British public, many of whom will not have uh, have seen her before um, and obviously she's in a very difficult situation given that the, where the opinion polls are um, but I think that it was a fairly solid speech I think in terms of out, laying out where she stands um, and what she believes in um, I think it was quite effective um, I don't think even her um, her most ardent supporters would say that she's the best uh, orator uh, best platform orator that there is um, but certainly I think it was uh, something that uh, they will conclude was a a solid speech which certainly sort of said who she is. And Dr Fletcher, when those protesters were in the room, was that a moment that she was able in a way to bond with some of those Conservatives in the hall? Did she seem more confident after that or did it rattle her? 
Well, I think uh, you might argue, you know, um, how much did the Tories pay them to, to do that? Because I think it actually had quite a beneficial effect um, on her speech. She did seem to uh, to sort of come alive at that point. Uh, she was able to respond to it and certainly got the, the audience in the uh, in the room behind her. Um, so I think sometimes these these unplanned interventions do uh, do sometimes um, have a, a positive effect on, on a speaker. Um, and uh, for someone who's perhaps not a natural uh, platform speaker it did allow her to loosen up a bit and also she i think quite effectively said you know she'll be coming to to, to address um those points later in her speech and gave her an opportunity um to say that um so not ideal but i think we've seen some fairly disastrous conference speeches in the past we think of theresa may's uh, speech in 2017 which was uh, very painful to watch and she struggled through that this wasn't i don't think in in, in that league i think this was a um, some noises off, which I think that um, allowed her a moment to to be able to to get the audience behind her. Actually, and where do you think this leaves her with her party? Because it's been really quite a messy party conference at times for for Liz Truss and the Conservatives. Do you think this speech does anything to calm the nerves a little bit? Well, I think she'll be hoping that it, it, it calms some nerves. I think certainly the leader's speech at the end of a conference um, like this uh, is, is the point at which you expect to see the party rallying round and uh, and sort of putting a full stop at the end of what can sometimes be a turbulent uh, conference. And these events include huge numbers of, uh, of MPs and, and ministers going around speaking at different events. You expect there to be quite a bit of um, of uh, turmoil when when there are disagreements and going into this conference of course in a very difficult position that was even more so so yes it has been I think a very turbulent um, conference um, but I think the um, the relief I think that, that she and her team will feel is that um, you know the cabinet and, and others are, are now no longer being pursued around the conference centre by, by journalists trying to get them to contradict each other um, I think there's an opportunity now to say well she's made the speech that's where she she stands. Um, they've had the the U turn that they had to make. She's said that they they've listened on on that. And I think she'll be trying now to sort of um, start again and 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 try and go forward on the basis of of how she's she set it out. But I mean, it's been a very diff difficult conference. I think any conference that begins with um, opinion poll ratings, um, as as we saw, is going to be difficult. And of course, the party was was very spooked by that. Um, and then we had the sort of collapse of. Uh, a sort of party discipline, which is never a good thing uh, at any time, but particularly during a party conference. Um, so, I mean, I think you could possibly say things can only get better. Maybe that would have been a better uh, song for her to come on to. Um, but I think, you know, uh, she's she's delivered what she will have considered, I think, a, a solid speech. And the hope will be that some of the, uh, the disunity and uh, ill discipline that we've seen in the Conservative Party this week, um, that hopefully that will, will now be able to be contained somewhat in, in the future. And just finally, in terms of the audience, Dr. Fletcher, that she was aiming at, I mean, there was a section in there on Ukraine which seemed to be aimed um, in no small part at Vladimir Putin. Yes, absolutely. And I think we can sometimes forget when we're sort of considering the, the domestic politics of, of these things that there is a, uh, a fairly um, grim world out there, that there is a very serious international situation still, still going on. Um, and I think for Liz Truss, someone who's previously been foreign secretary and has been quite hawkish on uh, Russia and uh, and supportive of, of Ukraine, I think that section of the speech it got a standing ovation and uh, uh, we would expect to, to have seen that. Um, I think uh, she's, she's making the point there that where um, Boris Johnson and his administration were seen as uh, as staunch allies uh, of the Ukrainian people that she wants to continue with that and um, and as you say sending a very clear message to Vladimir Putin that she stands uh, with Ukraine and uh, with the sort of Western alliance in, in uh, opposing um, what he's doing in Ukraine and I think that's something which does put everything else really in, into perspective and something which I think probably now she's left the party conference and is heading back to, to Downing Street, I suspect will be taking up quite a bit of her time in the coming days and weeks.